Hello everyone, welcome to Juan Diman. It has been a while and you might ask why I never recorded that famous video about how to build the time-lapse machine. After a wedding and a lot of life, it took me some time to catch up with the pending backlog, but now here is the final chapter of this long story. We are going to start with how to print the pieces. You can find the STL files and a link to printables in the description. I have tested printing at the rail with PLA and with ABS. I tried a few times to print it using ABS, but the reality is that I never got as good results as I get with PLA. Maybe it's because the ABS filament wasn't good enough, or maybe because I just don't know how to print ABS. All the attempts ended in a strange consistency, like, like the layers were not sticking properly. I've been Googling about it, but I never got to uh, a, a proper answer for the issue. If you have any recommendations for it, please let me know. It is important to print the parts as strong as possible, given the stress that they are going to go through. So I focus on using the good old PLA. I use nine lines for the walls and a 20% infill density, which helps to achieve a strong and lightweight pieces. To fit the pieces of the rail together, I use the counter sunk screws so that the wagon can move freely and the connection between the pieces is seamless. You can find the details of the screws that I used on the printables link in the description, right next to the subscribe button. The wagon uses a pair of 608 standard bearings as well to move within the rail. It creates a smooth movement surface, excellent to keep the camera stable within the rail. To power the wagon in the rail, I use a NEMA 17 standard stepper motor, the type that you use on the 3D printers, but a little bit smaller. It is great because it has a great torque and it's quite cheap to find. Any NEMA 17 capable of moving a camera that you attach could work. It is connected to a driver ATA25 from Texas Instruments. It's a nice cheap combo, easily accessible for everyone and does the job like a charm. The software is running on a Raspberry Pi 4. I suspect that it could run on almost any hardware that supports Octopi and Optolabs, since the scripts are quite simple. But the system running Octolabs, it is required to have GPO pings. If you never heard about those before, don't worry. I'll post a video from the engineering man explaining how they work. So we have printed all the piece or the parts. And this is the main rig, which contains, which is basically um, the rail in which the, the system is going to work. I'm gonna build this really quickly and I'll see you in a minute. Once we have the rail, we can move to the wagon. Uh, be careful with not um, overdoing these screws because otherwise you're going to push down the, the bend that I built for these screws and, and they will basically lose the form, and lose the shape. This is the wagon. It's, um, it's a simple piece that goes on top of the rail. Let me grab the rail like this. And we're gonna put the, the NEMA 17 motor on top of it. So this goes like this and it includes um, four screws to make sure that it doesn't have any kind of vibration because um, it will, uh, will not help the camera if it has a, vib a vibration. I'm gonna post the links to the, um, to the motor that I used and where I bought it as well as the screws because they, they seem to they have to be quite quite specific in this case. That's good to go. Now that we have all the pieces together, we can check how it, how it goes in the rail, if there is any, any interference and if the, if the connections work well. Seems to work like a charm. This is the camera holder. It's not the best print in the world, but hopefully it will do the job. It goes like this and that and here you will have the the camera using a little screw let me see if i can show you this on the camera that will hold the camera there you can also adjust it in and out that will help to make sure that the the perception of the of the or the perspective of the printing is the best that you can get this is a lot that we can see here is for the micro switch it will let the system know when the homing position has been reached. 
Let me see if I can introduce this in here. Going there we go. There we go. So you can find the right position for it. If we take the, the camera adapter out, there we go. You can see that there is a, a little, a little dent. This is not the best micro switch that you will use for this case. In the prototype that I had, I was using one like this. This one uh, ex exposes the roller and the roller is the one that touches. I'm going to show later another one, which is the one that I have installed in the prototype. And this is the dent that we will position on the rail. Whoops. Look at me throwing stuff. So this dent will, will be positioned, depending on your, or on your extruder, in a position in which when the rail goes through, it touches the micro switch. And uh, that will be the position in which we will home the system to make sure that it doesn't it doesn't inter in interfere with the with the extruder. Well, now that we have it on, let's put this thing on the 3D printer and see how it looks. First, we are going to focus on the on the left side. Uh, you can see that there are four screws for this protector. I left the top right one there because it, it, we don't really need it. And uh, given given the how the how the arm is done, but if you if your three D printer doesn't have uh, those those screws, you might want to change the adapter and build something slightly different. For the Ender three V two, um, I'm using three very large screws. I'm gonna put the 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 link on the description, and then you simply screw them screw them in. As you can see, the extruder at any point actually um, interacts with the with the holder, it's always far away from it. On the other side, things are slightly more complicated. As you can see, the piece that holds the rail goes on top of the, what will be the Y axis, which means that um, you need to get longer screws because the, the default ones don't work. Let's do this quickly and show you the result. So this will be it. And you can check if the angle is correct, if the structure has been printed with the right um, strength to, to hold the, the weight. And we can put the, the, the missing screws. This is the other micro switch that I was mentioning. The one that already has slightly like kind of like a roller. We're gonna glue this with uh, with glue, hot glue gun, right there, into the wagon so that I can show you how, how to measure where to put the dot that will be the one humming the camera, the camera wagon. Here you can see the holder of the camera mounted to the webcam. This is our, an old Logitech that I had at home. Um, and you can see this is a, a, a different screw than the one that I printed because the one that I printed, honestly, is not the best. <laughs> so you tie the, the screw to there and then you can actually control the angle at which the camera moves. And then this will go right here. And this is an adapter that you can change to whatever, whatever is the shape of your of your webcam so that you can actually build your own one. I'll show you later how it looks once everything has been mounted. For now, let's see if we can put some glue into this lovely um, micro switch. This is the notch. It goes screw there. Uh, you simply take the screw that which I'm gonna post on the description and you drill it and then at some point it will, it will go through and you have to be careful that it has to be pretty tight to this corner to this um, to this side this face but it has to it has to make sure that it doesn't it doesn't go over because otherwise it will it will it will clutter the rear the rail and the, the bearings which have to have to fit there perfectly you can see how 
it clicks when it goes through and the position of it i put it a little bit behind the handle it has to be close enough to the extruder but it doesn't have to be um it doesn't have to be on top of it and he it, it needs to have enough enough uh, distance for the extruder to go to move freely other than that uh, any position will be fine the closer that position or the or the closer to the holder the more stable will, will be will remain that's that's the only thing now that we have it mounted and working we can give a try to it As you can see, every time that the that the wagon touches the knot, the wagon immediately stops in there. Now we're gonna go through the code. Uh, this part is slightly more technical, but the reality is that you don't need to know how the code works. But if you are an enthusiast or you are keen to learn how it works, feel free to stay over. Otherwise, you can simply uh, skip forward. I defined a few libraries that I needed to to be able to to make this work. One of them was a motor library in which you control how the motor moves the structure, and um, with a few methods like move, make the uh, the motor go or decrease the speed of the motor, stop the motor, and disable the motor. Then there is a switch library which basically makes sure that um, every time that something touches the switch there is an action attached to it. In this case, the action will always be to stop the, the, the motor. And then there are a few other scripts. Uh, there, are, there is a preprint script, which is executed before the, the printing starts. This is the one that, uh, that uh, places the, the wagon and with the camera on the home position at the, at the beginning of it. It does a few things. It tries to go to one side first, and then it tries to go to the to another side if it doesn't work. Because sometimes, depending on on in which position position you have the the camera, there is no need to go on both positions at the same time. So first you you do half a round, and then if it doesn't work, you do the other half. But most of the times, the the position of the camera will always be away from the from the extruder. If you see what I mean. Then there is a pre-snapshot, which is basically moving the motor to the snapshot number. Snapshot number is the number of the layer uh, that you are printing, unless you change the default behavior from Optolapse. I wrote this post snapshot, which basically this library, the only thing that it does is move the uh, wagon back to the home position after after uh, a snapshot has been taken, so the process is pre-snapshot, move to the move to the position, take a photo, post a snapshot, go back to home. There is a safety measure here. If the system couldn't find the home position, uh, this this line helps you to helps the wagon to go to attempt to find it again. This will help in cases in which the 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 notch and the switch don't clash very well. Nowadays, it's no longer needed because, because the, the, the activation method for the switch works like a charm. But just in case, I'll, I'll leave it there. And that's it. That's all it does. There are a few other tools that come with it, but in general, that's all it does. To define the electronics, I use KiCad. It's a very easy to use an open source program to, to define electronics. And it's quite, quite there, there is a lot of community and a lot of materials out there in order to learn how to design your own PCBs. And I found it easier for this case to, to illustrate what I was doing. We have the Raspberry Pi, which is this one. We have uh, the driver 8825, which is this one. We have a uh, uh, switch, which is the one that we put on top of the, the rail. What we do is to, to use this GPIL 27 in order to, co to tell a uh, Raspberry Pi when to stop moving the, the stepper motor. And the driver itself is controlled via the pins 22, 23, and 24, which tells, um, which tells the driver when to move in and in which direction, which is very handy. Also, the pin number 24 uh, um, 
turns on and off the enable feature so that the stepper motor is not consuming energy when it's not moving, it's simply staying quiet. The capacitator of the, the one in the driver and the one in the switch, uh, the one in the driver is, is recommended by the, by the data sheet, which I'm going to publish on the, on the description. And the one of the, um, of the switch is one that I had to put because I had noise. Sometimes for some reason, the, the switch will trigger, even though that the, the one was not passing by the notch. And after some research, I realized that it was uh, electricity noise. So using a really small uh, capacitor was enough to, to get rid of that noise. There are pro probably much better ways of doing this. This is the only one that I could find to fix it quickly. Here we are. This is Optolabs and Octoprint. Octolabs is the plugin that controls all the, the time lapses. And on Octolabs, you have in the, in the cameras section, you have this, uh, this edit camera. And in here, you can control a few of the actions that happen before and after you take a snapshot. In this case, before the print starts, uh, I added the pre-print uh, pre script. This is a .sh, which is a wrapper of the Python club, just to make sure that it, had, it has everything on it. Uh, before the snapshot, I used uh, the pre-snapshot, and after the snapshot, I used the post-snapshot. And that is enough to tell the system that before taking a snapshot, the, the wagon has to move to a specific position, and after taking that snapshot, the wagon can go back to the home position. This is rather a rudimentary dolly system. I'm sure that it can be improved. If you have any experience with those and you have any idea on how to do it, please feel free to send some recommendations in the comment. I will appreciate them. This is the culmination of a few months of work. I promise myself I will never embark in such a huge enterprise again. For the next video, I have a few ideas, all of them very exciting. If you don't want to miss them, stay tuned and see you soon.